Hey guys, it's Coop from Garage Gym Reviews. And today we have Jason Kalipa, founder of NC Fit, 2008 CrossFit Games champion, father of two and smaller triceps than me. I feel like the horseshoe of my tricep has protruded just a little <laughs> bit more, just being in the pro, oh my gosh. Today we brought him in to tell us 10 of the biggest home gym mistakes that many of you are making. Let's get into it. Jason Kleepy here. So I own brick and mortar gyms through NC Fit. I get to see a ton of athletes go in there, but I've also competed professionally in sport of CrossFit for almost a decade. And to compete at the highest level, I needed to train in our gyms, but also in my garage. And I've seen a few pitfalls that I think people can improve on when training inside their garages. Pitfall number one, not warming up. Now Coop, when people think about warming up, typically they're thinking about increasing core body temperature, working through a range of motion. And those are really, really important factors. But what they're not thinking about is the mental side. So the reason why the warmth is so important is what about those days where you wake up, you're achy, you're not feeling right. When you go in the garage after your warm up, that's my time that I analyze what I'm doing for that day. If I'm feeling good and fired up, I'll go get after it. If it's still after that warm up, I'm not feeling prepared, I won't really hit it too hard that day. But more so than anything, it's a mental check in to get you prepared for that day and get you ready for what is to come. Do you think even in the summer, like when the garage doors are open, people are training, they still need to go through a normal warm up, even if they're like technically warm? I think that's a piece that a lot of people miss out on because they go straight from their house into their garage and want to get right into it. But really, if they take the moment to warm up, it just starts priming everything and gets them ready to really put out their best effort. Sure. All right, so the second pitfall I see and one that I noticed in your garage gym is you have a ton of floor space. And that's kind of like CrossFit gyms in general. If you go to NC Fit, it's like there's a rig, but there's a ton of working room. Do you think that it's a problem if people just pack so much equipment in their gym that they can't even move? A lot of people, they want to go out and they want to get a bunch of gear and I get that. But when you're trying to design your garage gym, what you should be thinking about is how do I accommodate the most amount of floor space possible to be able to do activities with dumbbells, barbells, floor work, et cetera. And so what you really want to think about is loading up the perimeter and keeping the middle open. That's the key. Almost as if you could still park a car in there if you wanted to. Okay. I think the thing that everybody should do is probably just buy a bigger garage and then they can have more equipment and more floor space. <laughs> Perfect. Absolutely. Okay. Pitfall number three. Now this one in particular is all about effort. And the idea is you need to put out your best effort to get the results that you're looking for. Now there's two extremes here. Sometimes when you're in the garage and you don't have a coach around, you can go too hard, too quick. Also, you can go in there and just go through the motions. Two things that I really like and that we incorporate in our NC Fit app is EMOMs and AMRAPs. So an EMOM is every minute on the minute. And the reason why I like that style of training is that it's you fighting against the clock. Same with an AMRAP, which is as many reps as possible. Again, you're fighting against the clock. So when you're by yourself in the garage, two ways you can really incorporate your best effort is racing against this variable, which is the clock. Yeah. Every minute you're trying to fight those reps or AMRAP, you're trying to get as much as you can. Those are techniques that I've incorporated to really put yourself in that mindset to get your best effort. Totally, and I think that gets into the next pitfall, which is not having a timer. Now, this is just CrossFit gym in general. Every CrossFit gym has a timer. You have a timer. You talk about AMRAPs all the time. You talk about EMOMs all the time. Why do you think that garage gyms or home gyms should have a timer too? I think, I think timers are an exceptional tool. You know, using your phone uh, as your timer is fine. It's just hard to see. So getting a small timer or even a big timer and putting it up on the wall is just a really good way to hold you accountable for getting the work done. It's also a really great way to hold you accountable to getting in and out. So something that I do using the timer is I start it. And I say to myself, I'm gonna get in and out of this garage within 60 minutes. Now I'm holding myself accountable using that timer to get in and out. Yeah, well I think the biggest benefit or one of them is that home gyms are really efficient for training. You get in easily, you're able to get your training done and get out. The problem is you can get in if you don't have something you're pushing against like a timer, then you can start doing laundry or like there's other things in your domicile you know, that you can start doing when really you should be training. All right, Jason, watch this. I've been working on it. Coop, what the <laughs> hell is that? <laughs> Positions and going too hard, too often, too fast. And when you're training in the garage by yourself, it's difficult because you don't have a coach or someone there to observe you. And so what's really important is that you don't hit these positions. Here are some kind of pro tips. 
Number one, if you have the NC Fit app, go check out our movement library. If you don't, go on to YouTube, go identify an expert in the field and go compare your movement to theirs. Well, how are you gonna do that? You could film yourself performing the movement and there's major pitfalls you're looking for. The number one issue that we find is midline stabilization. So if you find yourself in any time, whether you're pulling from the floor, pressing overhead or squatting, breaking this neutral spine position, that's the first thing you wanna look for. And so this is key. If I'm talking to Coop, I'm gonna look like this. I would not look like this and I wouldn't look like this. So anytime you're watching yourself move in videos, ask yourself, are you moving with a neutral spine from head to hip? That's number one. From there, there's a variety of other points of performance you could dive into, but filming yourself is a tool and going lighter than you think is a great idea to start off with. Yeah. And so another thing that you could do is utilize tempo. I think tempo is a phenomenal way of strength training because you could connect your brain with your body. Take for example, a squat. As I'm squatting, if I'm in a tempo position, slow, what I could say to myself is, are my knees tracking out? Is my torso upright? Is my weight towards my heels? Slow on the way down and I'm checking in with myself. So what athletes can do who are training on their own, yes, they can film themselves, but they also just need to take the weight back, especially yeah. if they plateaued and start working on positions and building the awareness of what does it actually mean to maintain neutral spine? This is not neutral spine. And so if you're finding yourself in these positions, start identifying pitfalls and fixing them. Cool. So another issue that I've seen is not keeping it fun. You know, I'm in this fitness thing for the rest of my life. I'm not trying to do it for a day, a week, a year. I'm in it for life. And when you think about that, you have to keep it fun. Otherwise, you're just gonna get burnt out. So some things that I think about that athletes in their garages can incorporate, number one, music. Totally. If you're setting the vibe with the music, it's a great way to just start you off feeling better. Pick whatever music you want, utilize whatever service you want, but have some type of music resource in your garage to add to the atmosphere. Number two, <laughs> involve your friends and family. This cool. is a really great way, not only to connect with your children, to connect with your friends on a different, different way, but also it keeps you accountable, you know? So now if you know that every Monday, Wednesday, you're gonna have your neighbor come in, that's a great way to hold you accountable, to keep you consistent and to have more fun. And when you see your kids thriving there, even if they're in there for five, 10 minutes, that's a huge win. And again, it makes it something that's sustainable for the rest of your life. I just keep my door open to my garage and they just come out in and out all the time. Yeah, they bug me at times, but at the same time, like I'm not just a father when I'm with them, I'm a father when I'm working out and everything. And I wanna instill those principles with them whenever I'm doing whatever I'm doing. Something else to think about to keep it fun is variety. Okay. Now, variety, it could be a double-edged sword. So if you don't have enough variety in your training, you're gonna develop, um, singular modalities, right? Let's just say all you do is run. Okay, you'll be a good runner, but you'll maybe, maybe be missing other areas. But if you have too much variety and you're trying to do everything under the sun and you only wanna train three or four days a week, you may never get competent at anything. And so what you wanna do is you wanna identify a program that's gonna give you enough variety to have a well-rounded balance in your fitness, but not too much variety where you never become competent at the key skills that you need to live outside the gym. In general, everyone once a week should be thinking about pulling, pushing, squatting, and hinging, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. From, from big movers, and then increasing their heart rate, getting sweaty for 12 to 20 minutes, three to four days a week. And you know, at, at NC Fit, we have a, our NCX program, and that's really what is modeled after, is a strength piece, and then a 12 to 20 minute kind of conditioning piece. Totally, and a way to like capture that monkey mind and to keep you like enjoying your training is to do those four foundational movements, which is push, pull, hinge, squat, but do those while you're using other different bars, right? Like using specialty bars or do it with different equipment that you have. Yep. Like you're doing the same movement and you're getting similar results, but you're able to vary your training, which is like one, to prevent plateaus like conjugate training, something that Louis Simmons came up with. And also just to keep you engaged and enjoying the type of stuff you're doing. Cause you gotta remember for garage gymmers or people that come into the gym, what are they really trying to do? For me, I'm trying to live and our gyms are trying to help people live freely and fully outside the gym. Okay. So if your intention is to go into the garage to help you improve your life outside the gym, well, using different implements is a great way to put you in a more effective position outside, like a sandbag training, for example, which would mimic more like a bag of dog food. Yeah. The final pitfall that I see or issue is this idea of get in what you can. And what does that mean? That means if you have 10 minutes, get in 10 minutes. If you have 20 minutes, get in 20 minutes. If you have an hour, get an hour. Now, one of the things I want to recognize is that if you only have 10 minutes, you're probably not going to be able to do a 10 minute warm up. 
But what that also means, if you have a short time period, you're probably also not going to work up to a one rep max deadlift. So if you only have 10 minutes, identify something that is, you know, body weight or cardiovascular, where you don't really need to prime the motors as much to get you to lift heavy, get it something in and get back in the house. But something is better than nothing. Think about it like putting a little dollar in the piggy bank every day. Just as long as you stay consistent with your fitness, get in what you can, and over time you'll see the results you're looking for. Yeah, and a lot of people would look at you and think like, Jason trains two, three hours a day. Well, he may be training all throughout the day, but he's not, you're not doing like this stationary thing where you're going to the gym, all right, I put in two hours, and then you're not doing any fitness the rest of the day. Like yesterday, I know he flew in, he did an 18 minute EMOM, and that's what he did. He woke up this morning, he did a BJJ class, and we'll probably do workouts later. But it's not like this set thing where like, all right, I did my workout for the day, it was this amount of time, and now I'm not doing any more workouts. Yeah. Like you just get in with what you can, where you are, with what you have, and get it done. At a high level, for anyone listening who owns a garage gym, you gotta think about like, what is my ultimate goal? What am I really trying to accomplish? Well, what I'm trying to accomplish is fitness for the rest of my life. And if you think about it through that lens, it's not a day by day, it's, 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 this, this is forever. And so you get in what you can and you be smart about your decisions. If you have a short time period, get in something, get in some burpees, get in something basic. If you have a longer time period, maybe it's on a Saturday, get in a longer session, prime the motors and go heavy or do something like that. And if you're looking for inspiration, obviously go check out our NC Fit app. But the idea is you got to look at it as a daily routine that leads you towards this distant horizon in the future. Perfect. So this is the first video in a series that we're doing with Jason. If you'd like to see the others, make sure you subscribe. If you'd like to check out his app, check out the link in the, below the like button. This is Coop from Garage and Reviews. This is Jason from NC Fit. We'll see you next time.